everyone, it's Michelle, and welcome back to the Royal Daily Tea. First off, I want to thank every single person who wished me well on my community page. I really do appreciate your sweet thoughts of encouragement. I was definitely under the weather for the past couple of days, not feeling very well, but your messages really warmed my heart, and it's nice to know that you guys will be there for me, whether I have 100 videos or one video, so I really appreciate it. I also want to thank some people who have sent me some super chats and some super thanks and also for the people who have made orders in purchasing my merch watching my videos religiously if you send me a super thanks if you buy my merch everything supports me and my channel and helps me to continue making YouTube videos so I appreciate your support I really do have the best people on my channel, the RDT community is the best on YouTube. But you guys, we have a lot of juicy royalty to get through today, so you know what to do. Sit back and relax, grab yourself a beverage, and let's get into the royal daily tea. Well, another huge domino has fallen. Like I've said before on my channel, once the first domino falls, they just a keep on a falling. First, we had the New York City car chase was a huge domino. Then we had them being dropped from Spotify. And now a huge Hollywood award snub. They missed out on the much coveted Emmy Award nomination. Now, this is a huge blow to Harry and Meghan. As I've told you before, they really need a win to prove their worth in Hollywood and they missed the mark. Harry and Meghan, their career in Hollywood is imploding right before their very eyes. And in my opinion, this is the beginning of the end for Harry and Meghan. They are not doing well in Hollywood. So yesterday, WME was working overtime with a huge story that came out that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's bombshell Netflix documentary is nominated for a major Hollywood award. The problem is, it's not true. They, of course, came out with this story the same day that the Emmy nominations were announced tricking people to believe that Harry and Meghan had won an Emmy nomination, but they in fact got a huge snub. They pretty much got cock-blocked for an Emmy award. A-list Hollywood has spoken, and they said, not today, sis. You can't sit with us. Okay? But they did purchase an award to make themselves feel better, kind of a consolation prize for Harry and Meghan. But a lot of people who are not in the industry don't understand that the award that they actually got a nomination for doesn't mean anything. I used to work in the industry and I can tell you there are only five real awards in Hollywood that mean anything to everyone in the industry. That is the Emmys, the Golden Globes, the Oscars, the Grammys, and the Tonys. The People Choice Awards, the MTV Movie Awards, the SAG Awards, those are all secondary awards. But in Hollywood, it is the top five awards that mean anything in the industry. And that is why Harry and Meghan were desperately trying to get themselves an Emmy nomination because they have to prove to people they're worth the money. We're worth the moolah, but word out on the street is, you ain't worth it, because you stank. Spotify is telling everyone, run for the hills. Put your pocketbook away and save your money, because you're going to go broke if you sign these two idiots in a contract. I do find it interesting, as far as I'm aware, Spotify has not come out and apologized for Bill Simmons' statement on the dynamic duo from Montecito. It's crickets. They're literally standing behind what Bill Simmons said. As far as I know, there has been no apology nor retraction on him calling them lazy grifters. 
So he has literally put it out to the world. Don't work with them. You're going to regret it. We've laid off half our workforce. We're in the red. They don't deliver. And I think the word is out in Hollywood that they don't deliver. Now, Netflix, they did have a hit with their docuseries, Harry and Meghan. I believe it was the second greatest documentary nonfiction behind the tender swindler for Netflix. It was a ratings bonanza because there were a lot of hate watchers, but it didn't last very long in the top 10. I remember every week it got pushed down and the show Wednesday remained in the number one spot for like six weeks. But Harry and Meghan was barely in the top 10 for two weeks and then it was bumped off. But for the documentary category, it was the second highest rating for Netflix. See, in Hollywood, everything has to do with categories. And the documentary is a lesser category in most of the awards, in most of the things that they count for movies, uh, TV shows, documentaries are normally not the most coveted spot. They're still very important. They're still very interesting. But when it comes to categories, the main categories are best movie, best TV show, best director, actor, actress, supporting actress, etc. Documentaries are normally a little bit down the tier of importance. Um, that people count in Hollywood. But it's still important, but it's not like the best actor, the best film, the best TV show, if you know what I'm saying. Categories are very important. So Harry and Meghan, in my opinion, were a shoe win for the Emmy nomination in their category, which was documentary nonfiction. Again, not the most coveted or the most competitive category. So it would have been an easy win for the dynamic duo. Now, if you remember, I believe Oprah Winfrey, the interview, the worst interview in the history of television, I believe it was up for an Emmy Award, but she lost to Stanley Tucci's cooking show. So even Oprah Winfrey got that interview an Emmy nomination because it's Oprah, she's an A-lister, and it was a smaller category but she lost out to Stanley Tucci's cooking show. So I really thought Harry and Meghan would have been a shoe-in because they're kind of infamous, and it was a very popular documentary, although it was not well done, nor was it well received. It still was a ratings bonanza for Netflix. And I'm sure Netflix really wanted to have an Emmy nomination because it looks good for them and they can validate, okay, signing Harry and Meghan wasn't a mistake to their shareholders, but they did not get the Emmy nomination. Now, in my opinion, they lost the Emmy nomination due to the New York City car chase and all of the negative dominoes that have fallen since. Everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. So let's just say the last 90 days have not been great for Harry and Meghan. As a matter of fact, I would say 2023 has not been a stellar year for the moochers of Montecito. I believe my 2023 predictions are coming true when I said 2023 was going to be the honest horribilis for Harry and Meghan. Well, I don't think I'm that far off, guys. It hasn't been a great 90 days. It all started with the New York City car chase, in my opinion, that was the biggest domino to fall, and it has wrecked their credibility in the industry. They became a global laughingstock on a grand scale. I mean, South Park making fun of them was hilarious, but it was certainly not as well known as the New York City car chase. I have friends who do not follow the royals at all. They know nothing about Harry and Meghan. They could give a rat's patootie about Harry and Meghan or anything to do with the royals. They even contacted me and like, so what's going on with Harry and Meghan in that New York City car chase? What's that about? They even heard about it. They were on the cover, I believe, of New York Post being called the Duke and Duchess of Hazard. You had the mayor of New York City making fun of them, laughing saying, uh, we don't believe this happened, the police commissioner doubting them, 
and the fact that they closed the case investigating this because Harry refused to hand over his own video footage. What does that tell you? They made fools of themselves. Their credibility was hanging on by a thread and they flushed it down the toilet. Talk about a royal flush. They did it to themselves, guys. In my opinion, they have now likened themselves to Jesse Smollett and Amber Heard. Meghan Markle's Hollywood career and dreams are over, in my opinion. I cannot imagine anyone signing Meghan Markle to any mega deals. They are toxic. People are avoiding them like the plague. And I've told you before, A-listers in Hollywood do not like Harry and Meghan. They're a very small, intimate, tight group of people. And it's very hard to get in the inner circle. And now Meghan Markle is the new Amber Heard. So them getting snubbed for an Emmy, I believe, was due to the New York City car chase them losing their contract with Spotify, and Bill Simmons coming out and publicly calling them grifters and nobody apologizing. They're literally standing by the man's statement. So now that they've lost that Emmy nomination, there is no way in hell they're going to get any awards for their docuseries. Now, WME did come out and say that Harry and Meghan had been nominated for a huge Hollywood award, but that is the most laughable thing I've ever seen. Now, I've never heard of this award. Apparently, it's only been around for a couple of years. Apparently, it's the third annual award. They don't even have an actual date or place that they're going to give the award out. Is it going to be in someone's basement, a bowling alley, a Chuck E. Cheese? We don't know. But this is a made-up award that pretty much can be bought. So I did a little bit of an investigation on this Hollywood Critic Association Award. And let me tell you what I found out. It's very interesting. So the Hollywood Critic Association is an award that just started a couple of years ago. But I looked up their FAQ, People Can Pay to Become a Member, and it says, How are award ceremonies financed? And it says, Sponsorships. The HCA works with private entities to promote their products or services at our events. There are two kinds of sponsorship, paid and in-kind. In-kind sponsorships occur more frequently and can be best described as trade or barter. You know, example, a company provides liquor in exchange for their logo to be on the red carpet or the step and repeat. There are table sales. Leading up to the ceremony, the organization sells tables for those who wish to attend the event. You couldn't sell a table for the Emmy or the Oscars or the Golden Globe. That is invite only. So you can literally attend this award if you have the money to buy a table. It seems like every time Meghan Markle gets an award, it is always these ones where people can pay to attend and pay to win. You know what I mean? They're not real awards that people have to pay to attend, guys. That's fishy. But here's the interesting part. Entry fees. Entry fees? The HCA TV Awards only, which is the one that Harry and Meghan are nominated for, again, categories matter, networks and personal publicists can submit shows, writers, directors, and actors who wish to be considered when membership begins to vote. Sometimes actors, writers, or directors will self-submit. Submission fees are standard practice for many award bodies. So basically, meaning WME paid Harry and Meghan's entry fee to get nominated for this award. Now, they only had 27 people on this board who voted for who would get a nomination compared to the 20,000 people who voted for nominations for the Emmys. You see the difference? They literally are telling you you can pay to get nominated. 
So it seems these people are hurting for some money. And WME came with a little check and said, Harry and Meghan want to be nominated. And they got nominated. So this is not a huge Hollywood award. People don't even know what this award is. Again, it seems very shysty. And they only have 21,000 subscribers on their YouTube channel. You guys, I have more subscribers than they do. Their award ceremony, which aired last August of 2022, only had 54,000 views. That's not a lot of views. We have people in the Mexic community who get that view per YouTube video in 24 hours. So it's telling you this is not a huge award compared to the Emmy Awards, who has millions of views for their award ceremonies. So no one has ever heard of this award. It's like the third annual award, probably made out of someone's basement. And W. Emmy most certainly paid to get Harriet and Meghan on the ballot because they knew they were going to be snubbed for an Emmy. So they have to make themselves look really good and say, Harry and Meghan got nominated for this huge Hollywood award that no one has ever heard of that's being held in a bowling alley, but it don't matter because it's an award. And we all know that awards are Meghan Markle's love language. They get herself all tingly inside and her narcissistic wet dream comes true. This is what they do. They pay for these useless awards. But the gig is up. In Hollywood, you might as well have won a bowling trophy. If you don't have the top five awards, you're not an A-lister. Sorry. That's a nice little award to have. They'll, they'll go and take it, put it on their mantle. But it's not important in Hollywood. It's not going to open doors for you. This is what the low-level actors get their publicists to do for them to make them look good for recruiters and for directors to want to hire these actors who are trying really, really hard to get hired for a movie. But people like Jennifer Aniston, Nicole Kidman, they don't need these fake awards. They have real awards. Do you know what I'm saying? So this is just another attempt for Harry and Meghan to look good in Hollywood, but it's not working. Like we've always said, you can put glitter on poop, it's still poop. This award is useless. It's a paperweight. It's a door stopper in Hollywood. It doesn't mean anything. So there's a rumor going around that Meghan Markle is going to star with Kevin Costner in the remake of Bodyguard 2. Well, I believe he has come out and already denied it. There is no way in hell Meghan Markle is going to be cast in any A-listers movie unless she's going to be playing herself in a little walk-on part. Her career in Hollywood is over. She is the new Amber Heard. And do you know where Amber Heard is right now? She's quit acting and she's living in Spain because she keeps losing movie deals and nobody wants to sign her as an ambassador. I don't see Meghan Markle being an ambassador to any major brand anytime soon. All they have to do is call Bud Light and ask them about Dylan Mulvaney and see how well that went for them. Amber Heard was so unlike they had to cut her out of Aquaman 2 because people hated her that much. I believe the same thing will happen to any brand or any movie who cast Meghan Markle. You're going to get a lot of attention, but it's not going to be the good attention. I don't know how many of my followers have told me they've dumped Netflix because Netflix signed Harry and Meghan. Y'all are very passionate about that. You get mad at me for still having Netflix, but y'all, I don't have cable. You know, give me a break. But I'm just saying so many people jumped ship because they signed Harry and Meghan. So in my opinion, Harry and Meghan are going to have a very hard time keeping that Netflix contract afloat. They need a win. And if Harry loses his lawsuits, he's going to lose them all. If he loses the home office, if he loses the one against the mirror group, in my opinion, all the other dominoes are just going to fall. And they're going to lose upwards of 20 million dollars. That's a whole lot of moolah. 
and considering the fact that they are not signing any major deals. When is the last huge deal Harry and Meghan have signed since 2020? Nothing. It's been Spotify. It's been Penguin Random House. It's been Netflix. But they haven't done a great job, and Spotify has already dumped them. So they need to have a huge win on Netflix. We don't know if the Heart of Invictus is supposed to come out next month, if it's going to be a hit or not. We don't know if he's actually going to do the Africa documentary. We don't know if they're still going to make that movie Bad Manners. It is not 100% picked up or green-lighted by Netflix. So again, Harry and Meghan, they are hanging on by a dear thread. The only other thing they really can do is their docuseries 2.0 and to release another version of his book, Spare. That is all they got in their wheelhouse. So in my opinion, Harry and Meghan are dead in the water in Hollywood. And I think Meghan might be packing her bags in 2024. That is all the royal news I have for you guys today. What do you think of the news of Harry and Meghan being snubbed for an Emmy Award? And do you believe this is the beginning of the end for Harry and Meghan in Hollywood? Leave me your comments down below. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye, guys.